Welcome to Mark 4 Video Series, and I'm going to use Blender 2.7. In this video, I'll be showing you a few things, primarily how to animate objects and cameras along a path. Why would you want to do this? Well, in some cases, it just makes more sense to animate objects on a path, whether it be if you're animating a roller coaster or animating a train, or if you just want to have a set fly through through a 3D environment and you'd rather not animate every single keyframe, you can just instead make a path out of a special object called a NURBS object and then animate and or attach a camera that's animated along that path. Let's go ahead and dive in. What I'll do is I'll delete my default cube. I will not need that. And instead, I'll go ahead and press Shift A on my keyboard to my add menu. And I'm going to add a new kind of object that we really haven't used too much um, in any of these videos in this series. And that is a curve. In this case, we're going to be using a path, though you could use a, uh, a circle or any, any of these objects really. I'll be using a path though, so I'll go ahead and add that. When you add a path, it looks pretty boring. It looks just like a plain uh, set of edges attached to each other. But let's go ahead and press tab to go into edit mode. And as you can see, when you press tab, if you're watching this on high enough resolution, you'll see all these little arrows. And that's the direction that this path is moving, or it's the direction that objects will move along this path in that direction. And it actually has vertices on it, so I can select any of these vertices. There is no vertice select or edge select options on the header, unfortunately. So you can only select vertices. But what I can do, and what makes this an interesting and kind of a good tool to use for a curved path, is that this is a NURBS object, which means it's not like normal edges. It's kind of like edges that have a subdivision surface modifier built into it. So as you can see when I grab with the G key these vertices and move them around, or I can use my gizmo of course as well, you can see the actual path, I'll go ahead and press tab to go back into object mode, is now curved um, at sort of a blended rate around where these vertices have been moved. So if I move this one really high up, it sort of blends itself with this low down one and sort of makes a a gradual curve. I can also move these side to side so I can really make any kind of a roller coaster shape um, that I want. So I'm going to quickly actually scale this way up back in object mode. I'll press S to scale that considerably up. Let's go back with tab into edit mode and I'll grab these uh, vertices and move them around. If I want to make more uh, to my path or make a longer roller coaster let's say, I could select the vertice on either end and press E to extrude it out and that way I can keep going, I can make whatever kind of a crazy thing that I want. You can also select um, two vertices by holding a shift after you select the first one and hold shift and right click and select the next one to have two selected and then you can press W and subdivide. W brings up your specials menu um, when you're in edit mode and I can subdivide and so now with those two vertices selected, I've subdivided this edge between them, and I have a new vertex to play with. I can press G, I pressed the wrong key there. I can press G and move those around, and all is good. Okay, let's go ahead and constrain an object to this path. So, I'll press tab to go out of edit mode. I'm gonna add a new object. In this case, I'm gonna add a really simple roller coaster, a uh, cart or car. Um, I'm gonna add just a cube. So add with shift A, mesh uh, cube. I'm going to make this smaller, so I'll scale it down with the S key, make it a bit bigger than that, and I'm going to press S and then Shift X, and what that will do is it'll let me constrain uh, my scaling to negate the X axis. So again, that's S and then Shift X, and that will make sure it does not uh, scale on the X axis, but it did scale on the Z and Y axis, so I made it quite narrow. Okay, I've got my, maybe I like that a little bit uh, fatter, so S and then Shift X, just like that. Now, I want my roller coaster car to follow the path, but not in the middle of the coaster car. I want the bottom of the coaster car to uh, follow the path. Right now, the origin of this object, in fact, I can't zoom right now very well because it's a small object. So if I press the period key on my number pad, it'll zoom into that object and fix that zoom problem. If, you're, if you ever have a problem with that where it won't zoom into an object, the period key on your numpad will solve that problem. It'll zoom to that object and fix it. Okay, the origin of this object is right in the middle. If I press three and then five to go into orthographic, you'll see the origin's right in the middle. I wanna move it down to the bottom. So I'll press tab. I'm gonna select that bottom face because I want it to be right in the middle of that face and I believe it is Shift-S on my keyboard, and I'm going to, with that face selected, Shift-S, 
and I'm gonna say cursor to select it. I put my 3D cursor to where that object is. And then what I have to do is I'll have to press tab to go back into object mode and I can set the origin over here. That option is not available to us on the tool shelf when you're in edit mode, it's gone, but there it is back in object mode right there. So I had this object selected, I'm gonna click set origin to 3D cursor. And so now this object's origin, my roller coaster car's origin is at the bottom middle of itself. Great, let's go ahead and with that cart selected, I'm gonna have to now constrain it to the path that I created. So what I'll do is over my properties window with the car selected, I'll go to the constraints tab. And what that has in it is a bunch of ways that you can constrain one object to another. Uh, with the car selected, I'm gonna go to add object constraint and follow path. Now this is a bit deceptively simple, although we have to do a few more things. Um, I have to specify a target. In other words, what path is this car following? Well, I'm gonna click in this area right here under the constraints tab and choose my path. It only lists path objects here. Great, that's what it's done. It's not quite where I want it to go though. Um, it's kind of put it near the end of the path, but not quite on it. And that's because the car was not directly in the middle of the scene. I had transformed the car. I had moved it away from the middle of 000 in my whole world. So I can press Alt G on my keyboard. That clears my movement or clears any grabbing that I did. Alt G. And so now, as you can see, the origin is where it's supposed to be. I had basically offset it. But if I press Alt G, it puts it back to where you want it to go. Great. It's not animated though yet. If I scrub through my timeline, um, and move it head around, it does not move. And that's because I have to, with my object selected, uh, click on Animate Path. Great, once I've done that, if I click it again, it'll actually give me an error, path is already animated. But now if I scrub through, as you can see, it is following my roller coaster. I can zoom out, and great. But it's staying kind of in the same orientation, it's not rotating, how can I fix that? Well, that is this follow curve checkbox. If I click that, it will orient itself to the way it thinks it needs to go. In this case, it's pointing the wide way first. That's not what I want, but as you can see, it is working great. How can I change it? What if I want the long way, which is what I had in mind? Um, how can I make that point forward? Well, this object right now with the gizmo on it, if I have it selected, of course the gizmo is right there. It's showing me the global axes of that object. What I wanna do is down here on the header of my 3D viewport is change my uh, transform orientation to local. That's just the way that the gizmo displays. And as you can see, the way that this giz or this object is facing according to the gizmo is with the Y positive axis facing towards the path. And as you can see, that's the same option that we have here. You can see down, actually that's the global axis. Um, the green means Y and its local direction is facing the path. What I want it to do is have the local, I think the X, that's the red one facing forward. And so if I click on X, that's what it'll do. And then what if I wanted the green axis to be pointing up instead of the blue Z axis to point up? That's what this up option is for. If you have it set to the same um, axis, if I have X and X, it just won't work. It'll go off and you might be wondering why that's happening. Um, I'll need to put a Y or a Z there. Uh, it's really up to you and how you modeled your roller coaster car. Um, but I will need either Y or Z pointing up. There we go, let's go ahead and check this out. What I'll do is I'll press play and it'll scrub through. Now why is it going at this speed? That's a good question. That's because this curve, this path object, has a built-in duration. And over here, if we have it selected in the properties window, there is an object data tab. If I click on that and I go down to path animation, which is checked, um, the frames number is the one that really matters here. So if I change that to 250, which is the length of my current timeline, you can see that it jumped because at 160, it's not gonna be done yet. Uh, let's go back to the beginning and I press play. It's gonna take that whole 250 frames to get from the beginning to the end. Now, you might be asking yourself, okay, I've been a roller coaster, but at the beginning, it's not even facing the way that I want it to go. You can see that it's not um, sitting upright. It's kind of, the people are on their side in, in the roller coaster. How can I fix that? Well, you can actually animate 
the object while it's moving along the path. Um, and this works especially well if you're rotating. So if I select that, oops, if I select um, the car and I want to animate it, what I can do is I'm not going to turn on my red record button here. I'm going to use the I key instead. What I'll do is I'm going to press R to rotate. And I want to rotate on the local, and what axis is it facing? It's the local X axis. If you press R and then X, it'll rotate on the global X axis. That's not what I want. What I'll do is I'll press R and then X twice. So R and then XX. And that'll rotate on the car's local X axis, which is the way it happens to be facing on the track, because that's what we, that's what we specify. So I'm going to rotate it to be right there. And what I'll do here is I'll press I now, which is kind of an alternative to using the record button. I means insert keyframe, and I'm only going to insert a rotation keyframe right there. Okay, so I made a rotation keyframe. Let's go a little bit later. Let's say that I don't want my people to be facing that way. Usually roller coasters, when they spin around a curve, they, they face outward or the car is kind of being flung around the outside. So I'm going to press R, and then it's X, X twice, and then I can spin the car to right around there. And I gotta press I now to make sure that keyframe is actually set. So I, and it knows the last one I selected was rotation, so there we go. It remembers, so it puts it on my mouse cursor right there. So now it'll know to curve in that direction, and I could keep on going. But let's go ahead and play around with cameras and curves, because you might be wondering how to do a fly-through, and then how to make your camera be able to look around as you're flying through a scene. So I'm actually gonna go to File New, and reload the startup file. And let's go ahead now and delete that cube. Let's go ahead and press Shift A. And I'm going to add a new curve. So curve and path. And I'll scale it way up. Uh, S. And let's go ahead and make a fun curve. So I'll grab that one, move it that way, be that way, and down, and that way, and that way. And sure, I'm just pressing G to move all those points around. Wonderful. It's not quite as exciting as I want. If I look at it, it's still pretty dull. Um, what I can do is I can select multiple points again using the shift key and right clicking and then I'll press W and subdivide and that way I can make more um, interesting and extreme paths because it smooths it out so with only a few points uh, which is default it might not get the curve that you want so what I'll do is I'll move that one straight up and good enough. Let's go ahead and constrain this camera now, if you recall, the roller coaster, my last example, didn't go to the right point. It went to the start of the path, uh, but it was not quite on it in the right way. And that's because we had transformed that object. We had moved that roller coaster car uh, up a little bit. In this case, I'm gonna make my camera stick to this path, but I don't want any rotation on this camera or any movement. So I wanna reset it to face in its default rotation and its location to be right in the middle. So I will press with it selected, Alt-R and Alt-G on my keyboard. That'll reset the, ro the rotation and the location of it. And we have to, of course, uh, with the camera selected, add a constraint to it. So under the uh, Constraints tab in the Properties window, I'm going to add a Follow Path constraint, just like before. What is the target path? Well, if I click in this area, it's the NURBS path, the only path in my scene, and it jumps straight to that path. I have to click on Animate Path, and again, this path has a duration uh, of 100 frames, and that's okay. Let's go ahead and see what that does. If I select everything so you can see it a bit better, you can see the camera's pointing straight down. Well, I can fix that if I want it to be fixed. <laughs> I could select the camera, and under the Constraints tab, I could say Follow Curve, and that way what it'll do is it'll change direction as it's following that curve. That's great. I want to follow point in the direction of the curve. Now, again, what I'll do with the camera selected, I'll change the transform or the gizmo orientation to local. And as you can see, the way the camera lens is facing is in the negative Z direction. That blue arrow is the Z direction or axis um, of the local coordinates of the camera. Well, the opposite of positive Z is negative Z, so I'm going to make a point in negative Z. But of course, we can't have up in the same axis, Z or negative Z, uh, for up, so I'm going to change it to Y, and that looks pretty good to me. So now it's facing in the direction of the path, and if I scrub through, you'll see that it's following 
uh, the path quite nicely. That's great. And again, if I wanted to, I could animate the local um, Z rotation of the camera as it's moving along. If I want to rotate in a different way, um, that's all good and great. But how do I, let's say I'm making a person um, or a fly through of a roller coaster uh, animation and I want to be able to have the camera follow the curve of the roller coaster track but I want to also be able to let the person or the view kind of look left and right and up and down as they're riding the roller coaster. Well right now you know I could do that just by animating but of course there is a better way. If you watch my video on uh, camera targets, I'll put a link to that on the screen right now in the top left corner. Um, that you'll know that you can have an object that the camera always points to. It's a camera target. Let's go ahead and add that. Now, this actually requires us using two constraints because one constraint is to make this camera uh, constrained to the path. That's what we have right now, a follow path. We also have to use, if you recall in that other video, a track to constraint. And we have to track to a different object. Let's go ahead and add that second uh, camera target object. I'm going to press Shift A on my keyboard and I'm going to add an empty. I'm going to add one with arrows just so we can see it a little bit better. There it is. That's my going to be my target object. And with my camera selected, um, I'm going to add another constraint. Now it's important that you add it after your follow path. If you add a camera a track to constraint, and I'll do that right now, track to, it's right at the bottom of the tracking heading. Um, if it's above the follow path, it will not work correctly. It needs to follow the path first, and once it's done that, then you can let it look around. So that's what this is going to be for. It's red right now because it doesn't know what object we want it to point to or track to. That's what this is for. I'll click in this area, and I'll select empty. And what I have to again make sure is that it's pointing in the right direction at the empty. So again, with its local axes visible with the gizmo, I'm pointing the camera with its negative Z axis right there. And I can't have both this axis and this axis the same, or even the negative version of it. So I'm going to choose Y. And as you can see now, that camera is pointing at that axis, and or the empty. And if I move it around, you can see that the camera is pointing if you can see that, because it's just a wireframe right now, unfortunately, that the camera is pointing at that target. So even if it's animating along, you can see that on the path, you can see that it's always facing that empty, which is nice. Let's go ahead and press A so you can see that a little bit better. The empty is not animated at all yet, but as you can see, as the camera's moving along the roller coaster, it's always pointing at it. And at any point, or during the entire thing, you can animate the target um, and move it around as the uh, camera is moving along the path. So that's how to animate um, and attach and make objects either with meshes or cameras follow a path. That'll be it for this video. Please don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.